guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to look at the sandals, the gold, the silver, and the bronze, and we're going to trace the history. In 1901, Eugene Sandow held an event that he called the Great Competition. This was a physique competition, plain and simple. Nothing like this had been done on this scale. Sandow announced that there was to be a great competition open to all Sandow students in the United Kingdom. It would promote the spread of physical culture and afford encouragement to those who are anxious to perfect their physiques, quote unquote. There would be tempting prizes amounting to 1,000 guineas in all. The man who was judged to have the most perfectly developed body would be awarded a magnificent solid gold statuette of Sandow, reportedly worth 500 pounds. The second place winner would be awarded a solid silver statuette, and the third place winner would receive one of bronze. Sandow made it clear from the beginning that prizes would not necessarily be awarded to men who had huge physiques. He was looking for symmetrical, even development. To press home his point, he published a list of qualities that would be taken into consideration when the winners were being chosen. First, there was general development. Second, equality or balance of development. Third, the condition and tone of the tissues. Fourth, general health. And fifth, the condition of the skin. The contest was held on September 14th, 1901 in London's Royal Albert Hall. The judges of the contest included sculptor Sir Charles Laws Sandow, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who was the creator of Sherlock Holmes. 60 semifinalists were cut to 12. After careful inspection, the top three winners were announced. Third place and the bronze Sandow went to A.C. Smith. Second, the silver Sandow went to D. Cooper. The first place gold trophy went to William L. Murray of Nottingham. A 35-year-old sculptor named Frederick W. Pomeroy and Sandow collaborated in 1891 on what would become the Sandow Trophy. Today, an original of this sculpture is one of bodybuilding's most sought-after relics. Small wonder, then, that there were many who were interested in winning it in 1901. 1950 Mr. Universe and the Bronze Sandow. Promoters of the 1950 Mr. Universe competition in London were certain that the winner of the contest that year would be English superstar Reg Park. So they offered a tantalizing trophy, believing that it would stay in the country. This was the original Bronze Sandow statue that had been awarded to the third place winner A.C. Smith, 50 years earlier at the Great Competition. Steve Reeves arrived in York, Pennsylvania on Monday, May 29, 1950. The Mr. Universe was set for June 24 at the Scala Theater in London. Steve had five weeks to train. He weighed 200 pounds, about 15 pounds down from his normal contest weight. When John Grimmick saw him at the gym that day, he didn't believe Steve had a chance of winning or even placing at the contest. Steve knew the person he had to beat was Reg Park of Great Britain. During the third week of training, Steve came down with the flu. According to George Helmer from the great book, A Moment in Time, the Steve Reeves story, Steve could barely make it through the workouts. He was constantly on the verge of passing out after a hard set, but persevered. By week four, he was recovering from the flu, and despite having just gotten over the flu, he had packed on 15 pounds. He had transformed his physique into a rock-solid 215 pounds in less than five weeks. Now, Grimmick was heard to say in the gym as he pointed at Reeves, well, there's the next Mr. Universe. Much to a lot of folks' surprise, the victor that year was Steve Reeves, and he took the bronze Sandow back to his home in California. Before he left, however, he posed for a series of photos with the precious statue cradled in his arms. And these photos created a lasting impression in the minds of both fans and bodybuilders of the day. The Gold Sandow. The year is 1977. 
So now let's turn our attention back to William L. Murray's golden Sandow statue. It remained with him through the years, though its existence had been all but forgotten, except for members of his family. When a later historian tracked down this elusive trophy, it was in the possession of Murray's nephew. Upon close inspection, the gold statue turned out not to be solid gold, as Sandow's publicity had reported, but rather bronze with a thin gilt plating. In 1977, Dan Lurie would honor Steve into the WBBG Hall of Fame. This award ceremony took place at a dinner held at New York's Statler Hilton Hotel. A few weeks before the event, Steve was contacted by the nephew of William L. Murray, who asked, since you owned the original third place trophy from the great contest of 1901, would you be interested in purchasing the first place gold Sandow trophy, which my uncle won? Steve was grateful that he was contacted and the purchase was made. The amount of the purchase has never been disclosed, but it was expensive. Later, Steve told George Helmer that he could have bought a nice piece of property in California for what he paid for the gold Sandow. Steve told Murray's nephew that he would make arrangements for the funds and take care of shipping. Serge Nubre told Steve that his organization, WABA, would like to present him with an award in Paris on November 10th, 1977, and would he come to receive it? Steve thought this would be a great venue to be presented the gold Sandow. Steve made the arrangements for it to be shipped to Serge, who would take care of it until it was presented to Steve. Steve would now own two of the three original Sandals presented at the first major bodybuilding contest in the world, the Great Contest. Interesting enough, the silver Sandow has never been found and is believed to have been destroyed during the bombing of England in World War II. George Helmer became the owner of both Sandals after Steve passed away. And over the following years, he displayed them at the Steve Reeves Fitness and Film Festival in 2008. A few years ago, the Sandiles were sold to Vince McMahon's sister, who then presented them to Vince McMahon as a gift. Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger were both contacted about their interest in buying the Sandiles before McMahon became the owner. So there you go, guys. From 1891, when the Sandals were first sculpted, to 2021, that is 130 years. And as far as I know, both Sandals are still in the hands of Vince McMahon, WWE Vince McMahons. If you have any comments or questions, or if you know where the silver Sandow is, Leave your comments below and thanks a lot for your support, guys. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next video.